Hey, it's Mike, and today it appears that the most threatening thing in the world is what the health. There has been a what the health debunking frenzy lately. Like, heaven forbid people are gonna go vegan and start reversing diseases because they exaggerated that one point about dairy, so let's keep eating carcinogens. But one article has risen to the top of the toilet, this Vox article. I figure if I'm really smug, I can get some good hate comments. A lot of people have sent me this article, so let's talk about it. As many of you know, I already did a response to Z-Dog's more off-the-cuff response to the movie, but now people have had time to gather the resources and put their best guns forward. The Vox article, for example, actually has some links to some sources, so I think we're going to learn a lot more here than we did with Z-Dog. All right, let's look at what Vox's science writer Julia Belouz views as out-of-context, cherry-picked, and exaggerated points, starting with point number one. Eating processed meats is as bad for you as smoking, in which she says that the WHO never said that the risk to your overall health was equal, just that the strength of the evidence for cancer was equal. But I don't recall Kip ever being like, eating meat is as bad for your health in every way as smoking is. It appears that she is creating a bit of a straw man saying that he is equating them when he is really only comparing them, albeit with a bit of a dramatic illustration. I believe this is clear in the language of the very statement she has a problem with and included in the article. Quote, if processed meats are labeled the same as cigarettes, how is it even legal for kids to be eating this way? It is absolutely true that the WHO has labeled them the same, labeled class 1A and class 1A. All right, let's go to vegan court real quick. By arguing against the idea that it should be illegal to feed your children processed meats on the grounds that they are less carcinogenic than cigarettes is to say that it should be legal to give your children carcinogens if they are less lethal than cigarettes. And you totally lost me. Let's follow her logic here. Alcoholic beverages are considered class 1A carcinogens and they are less potent than cigarettes and their cancer causing power. Therefore, she's, she's saying that you should be allowed to booze up your infant. Welcome to Mothering 101. Is your baby having trouble falling asleep? Apply the class 1A carcinogen to their mouth hole. In all seriousness, going down the list of class 1A carcinogens, it is very clear that it would be considered child abuse, which would be punishable by law, to feed these to your children. And no, they are not all equally as lethal as cigarettes, but how is processed meat any different? But Julia's angle here is like, Kip was exaggerating, which is unacceptable. No, the dairy and meat industries exaggerate all the time in their ads, and something tells me she's not gonna be going after any milk and strong bones ads anytime soon. All right, number two, eating an egg a day is as bad as smoking five cigarettes. Now she doesn't really rebut this point in the sense that he's just saying what the study says. Harvard Nurses Health Study found that the daily consumption of the amount of cholesterol found in just a single egg appeared to cut a woman's life short as much as smoking 25,000 cigarettes, five cigarettes a day for 15 years. So take it up with the study's author, jeez. But I don't know what people like Julia are expecting. Like for every statement that is negative about an animal product, they need to come in with like a positive statement so it's super balanced. Now introducing What the Health 2 for meat eaters who are triggered by the idea that a vegan diet is healthier. But then I found a study suggesting that eating just one egg a day can be as bad as smoking five cigarettes per day. But many also view eggs as a healthy source of protein. World Health Organization this morning has classified processed meats such as bacon and sausage as carcinogenic. But just because it's a carcinogen doesn't mean it's that bad. She then pulls a Z-Dog and says that dietary cholesterol is not associated with heart disease, not citing any real sources, just really making an appeal to authority, saying that the scientific community has moved on, and then cites the USDA's cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern, which was based off the American Heart Association statement did you watch the movie? The American Heart Association partnered with Big Beef. And the studies used to vanquish the link between high cholesterol levels and heart disease rely on cross-sectional analysis, which ignores the genetic baseline, and also just studies a sick population in which everybody has a high risk of dying from heart disease. Just for a bit of contrast, the Institute of Medicine recommends that you keep your cholesterol intake as low as possible. And another point worth noting, one of the studies that the movie referenced when comparing egg consumption and smoking 
for heart disease actually looked at arterial plaque buildup. So even if you want to ignore the whole topic of cholesterol, isn't artery health what really matters here? From another study that measured the same metric, inner artery thickening, they found that vegan arteries were essentially the same, slightly better than marathon runners' arteries, both of which were healthier than the meat eaters studied. Okay, point number three, drinking milk causes cancer. I have no problem admitting that this is not a mainstream belief, but I did, I do have to say, I did put out a video about how meat causes cancer before the WHO made their declaration, before it was a popularly held belief, and I also put out a video about how dairy causes cancer, in which I discussed how it is likely the mammalian hormones present in milk that can trigger certain hormone-dependent cancers. As this study that I talked about way too much showed, after drinking milk, you can measure a 25% blood increase in certain estrogens and a 20% drop in testosterone. So it's very possible that you're not going to find milk consumption associated with every type of cancer for every demographic, but as this study found, daily milk consumption in adolescence or childhood increased prostate cancer risk later on at a total of 320% risk. But single studies don't count for her, only her amazing meta-analyses are worth anything. But as Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan already pointed out, one of the meta-analyses she points to is connecting dairy and lung cancer. Not a reproductive cancer that is hormone dependent, not a connected cancer. This is sort of as dishonest as she claims Kip is being. It's kind of like saying processed meat doesn't cause cancer because it isn't linked with lung cancer. Well, it's linked with colorectal cancer. Not every carcinogen has to be linked with every type of cancer. But it appears we do meet her standard here with a meta-analysis from this 2015 meta-analysis on prostate cancer and dairy consumption. They looked at 32 studies and found that intake of dairy, milk, and other dairy products were all associated with increased total prostate cancer. Cancer risk. We also know that milk boosts IGF-1, and IGF-1 fuels every stage of cancer, but it appears that animal protein in general also boosts IGF-1, so it's hard to get a clear answer when somebody who might just be drinking less milk could be eating more meat, keeping the animal protein intake the same. But when you look at vegans compared to others, you start to get some interesting answers. Looking at the Adventist study, we found that vegans had a 29% lower risk of all female cancers compared to meat eaters, but lacto ovo vegetarians had a 4% increased risk. And one of the main differences in diet between a vegan and a vegetarian is milk consumption, which might be responsible for some of that 33% difference in female cancer rates. So between the 3.2-fold risk of prostate prostate cancer, the meta-analysis on prostate cancer, the IGF-1 connection, and the lacto-ovo-vegetarian versus vegan difference, is it really that off the wall to say that milk causes cancer? All right, to number four, one serving of processed meats per day raises the risk of diabetes by 51%. Julia can just not handle this one. She dismisses this as no one eats that 50 grams of processed meat per day. It's just the occasional prosciutto sandwich. Does she realize how widespread processed meats are? From the WHO, processed meats are defined as, quote, meat that has been transformed through salting, curing, fermentation, smoking, or other processes to enhance flavor or improve preservation. Or from PBS, quote, processed meats are any meats that aren't fresh. Okay, fine, maybe that PBS definition wasn't super scientific, but seriously, wake up, have turkey bacon, the healthier bacon, still a carcinogen. Maybe grab a sandwich, have some ham in it, that's a carcinogen too. Dinner time, let's do drumsticks, it's chicken, it's white meat, also a carcinogen. There's so much processed meat out there. According to the National Pork Producers Council, 60% of pork, for example, is processed. So when you look at how the average American eats 46 and a half pounds of pork per year, as this chart illustrates, which is from FDA and USDA data, you're getting 57 grams of processed pork a day alone. That doesn't count all the other processed lamb and beef and chicken. And zooming out, it's possible that most cases of diabetes diabetes are being driven by animal product consumption. Looking to the Adventist studies, the meat-eating Adventists were the healthiest meat-eaters we have because they ate less meat and less animal products for religious reasons. And then you compare those to the Adventist vegans, who are vegan for religious reasons, not for their abs, not for health. The result is a 78% lower risk of total diabetes. Come on. I love this. Not all fish are created equal, just by the low toxin fish. 
Good luck! According to an Oceana report, in the US at least, 28% of fish are mislabeled. But you gotta get those omega-3s, so just eat around the toxins. Maybe just pick the toxins out. No, you can get the omega-3s you need from plants like flax seeds and chia seeds. And if you really want to cover your bases, according to the plant-based doctors, you can take some algae-based DHA a few times a week. And the longest living formally described population, the Adventist vegetarians, did, they didn't eat fish. Clearly, it's not a requirement. She then attempts to play back up the connection between genetics and disease. Let's save some time here. I'll just link my video on this topic at the end. All right, moving on. She then sort of ends with a big appeal to futility. Nutrition science is just not definitive. Throw your hands up, just eat 49 grams a day of processed meat, you'll be fine. She then goes on about how we can't just tie people up and force feed them certain diets which would be necessary to reach the level of scientific rigor that we need. I find this funny because it seems that whenever people are arguing against a vegan diet, they seem to forget that we do have a lot of these from this meta-analysis of 395 no longer ethical controlled feeding trials, they found that if you increase saturated fat, the majority of which comes from animal products in the US diet, particularly from dairy, that the levels of cholesterol also increase. Fun stuff, but going on a vegan diet brings you back down the other way. It lowers your saturated fat intake massively, which is likely why vegans have way lower levels of cholesterol on average and ideal levels of that LDL or bad cholesterol. Well, meat eaters average high. I love this last statement here. Few would argue with the fact that our diets have helped drive the obesity, diabetes, and heart disease epidemics, but turning around these problems will take a lot more than cutting out cheese and salami. Yeah, also cutting out all dairy, all meat, fish, and eggs, and replacing them with delicious plant foods. Ironically, a whole food vegan diet has been clinically shown to reverse those three diseases she just talked about. The broad study, massive weight loss while subjects were allowed to eat as much as they want, Neil Bernard's trial, major improvements on diabetic markers and Dr. Esselstyn's clinical trials, unclogging of arteries, and near eradication of heart attack and stroke in his subjects. But what the health uses shock journalism, so don't bother going vegan. In the end, well, Kip and Keegan did utilize a dramatic presentation style. Wow, totally unheard of. The underlying message here is true. Within developed countries, at least by sheer volume, it's very possible that these animal products are actually contributing to more deaths than smoking. Add up the heart disease, which is our leading killing disease. Add up the various cancers. Add up the diabetes. Add up the obesity. It's not that far-fetched. All right, that's it for today. Let me know down below if you felt like there were any points that I missed or maybe misrepresented. Feel free to like the video, subscribe, Subscribe, all those awesome things and super thanks to all my patreon supporters. I feel so patronized in a good way All right as usual links in the description. I will uh, Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video